he gets us, all of us, that those statements, those commercials, that website, in my relationships has received more criticism, more uproar, and more condemnation than any other commercial personality or moment that happened in the big game this past Sunday night. So there's questions we have to ask. I, I find myself wondering, why are we so angry about these commercials? What's behind these commercials? Who's behind these commercials? Who's behind the website? And I I hear there's all of this mystery and there's this anonymity. And at the end of the day, I, I found myself being reminded of an article that Joe Carter wrote back in 2023, in which in his article, he's able to very easily discover where the funding for the He Gets Us campaign is coming from. There's a donor advised fund with billions of dollars in it that is funding partially, that part of that money is funding this campaign that even David Green, the Hobby Lobby founder and head, is admitted to saying, hey, we're, we're a part of that. The same people that have funded the Museum of the Bible, who have fought for the gospel, who have gone against the, 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 the laws of our country when we've told people they can't meet or they can't use free speech or someone we've, we've seen as a champion of many of our evangelical and Protestant perspectives. So why are we so angry at pictures of people washing other people's feet? Well, I spent some time and went to the He Gets Us website, read their article on even what foot washing is and why they chose this imagery. And, and I am so thankful that they take the time on their website to answer questions that they know people are asking. And I think maybe even in response to some of the things that people have asked. And then I, I found myself thinking, why are there people on TikTok and YouTube and, and Instagram and every and Facebook who, when I'm scrolling, there's this angry person making the statement, Jesus only washed the disciples' feet. I'm like, I, I don't know why we're so stuck on that. Nowhere in the video did it say Jesus washed everybody's feet. It just said he washed feet. And you know, when you go to their website, which is what they want you to do if you see the commercial, and you read about why they put it there, there's a very clear recognition of ideological differences and religious differences and a very unashamed desire on their part that people would know the Jesus of the Bible. And they push people, whether you've been to their website or not, they push people to the Bible. Go read it. Go go see Jesus in Scripture. And I've watched that video at this point maybe seven or eight times. It's not a lot to it. It's easy to just slow it down and stop frame by frame by frame. And, you know, in, in none of the pictures do they put Jesus washing anybody's feet. They're very clear, I think, and right when they, they said Jesus didn't teach hate in the sense that Jesus did not teach us to hate. That might have been one of the issues people had with Jesus, that he wasn't just walking around condemning, but he was clear. Jesus said, listen, I, I've not come to condemn. I've come to save because everybody's already condemned. He never said they weren't condemned. He never said they didn't need to be saved. He just said, I've come to save the people who are worthy of condemnation. He said, the people you want to point your finger at and say, oh, they're sinners, no, they're condemned. He agrees, that's why he came. He wouldn't have come to save people if he didn't agree that people were in condemnation, in their sin and in need of saving. And then there's all these conversations I'm reading and hearing and even having personally where, well, he only washed his followers' feet. John makes it so clear in John chapter 13, 
that as Jesus got on his knees to wash Judas's feet, that it was already in Judas's heart to betray him. And that Jesus knew that. That Jesus knelt down and washed the feet of the one who in that moment had already an agreement and had decided and determined to betray this king who acted like a servant. And Jesus said, I'm doing this so that you will understand later. And so here's, here's my thought. If the he gets us folks are actually about the Jesus of the scriptures. And all these Christians are attacking them for how they think they should have made their video or what they think they should have put in their 60 seconds. This doesn't feel at all like washing feet. And Jesus said very clearly, do this to each other when I'm gone. And how amazing is it that he said, this is how people will know that you are mine, by the way that you love one another. And, and so my challenge to those who are angry that people who had money and have opportunity and have created a ministry that they're calling a movement of evangelism, or maybe even better referred to as a pre-evangelistic movement, um, trying to even introduce the idea of a Jesus of the Bible that they could then talk to you about, instead of attacking them, what, what if we piggybacked on what they're doing? Because I don't see Christians much on social media. Because it's, it's I guess it's just the popular thing and people click on the hate thing. Which I think just further makes their point that angrily attacking someone's effort to present Christ to them, to someone else, seems to be the opposite of by this they will know that you are my disciples by the love that you have for one another. The he gets us people seem to be very clear and comfortable in what they are trying to do. In, in many ways, I, I think they're occupying a space where there's zero competition. They're not trying to water down the gospel. They're trying to move people towards the gospel. They're not trying to present an alternate Jesus from the one of Scripture, they say they're trying to get people into Scripture to meet Jesus. The Jesus that they say loves everyone in Scripture is a Jesus who tells everyone that they need saving from their sins and then never condones sin, never affirms sin, never says sin is acceptable, consistently says even to like an adulterous woman, hey, don't go sin anymore. Stop it. Like, the Jesus of the Bible never affirms sin in any way, shape, or form. So, if a group of people have partnered together to move people towards the reading of the New Testament so that they can know who Jesus is, I just don't know why we're so angry about that why we have this need to prove that we could do it better or to communicate that if we had the money, we would have done it this way or I would have made sure it said this. Sure, good, good. I, I, man, I just couldn't help. I had to go find this quote from D.L. Moody because I, in ministry, unfortunately, have been around a whole lot of people that criticize what other people are doing. And I just, I've, I've just saved this quote. D.L. Moody is quoted as saying, it is clear you don't like my way of doing evangelism. You raise some good points. Frankly, I sometimes do not like my way of doing evangelism. But I like my way of doing it better than your way of not doing it. I can't help but just, that's just reverberating every time I see the angry TikTok guy, the, the YouTube preacher, the uh, Instagram tell you what you should believe person. 
that he gets his campaign doesn't say a lot. There's a whole lot of things they don't say. There's a whole lot of message that they don't put in their videos and that they don't write out on their website. But you know, they keep telling people to go read the Bible. That if they want to know the Jesus they're talking about, to go read the Bible. And here's my fear. If they go read the Bible and then they find us in the same internet space, criticizing and attacking and hammering one another. And let's just say they stumble on John 13 because the He Gets Us website and it tells them to go and to read when Jesus washed people's feet. And let's say they keep reading. And let's say they get to the point where it's John 13, 34. And let's say they read, a new commandment I give to you that you love one another just as I have loved you. You also are to love one another. By this, all people will know that you are my disciples if you have love for one another. What if they come across the part earlier in John 13 where he says, If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should do just as I have done to you. Truly, truly, I say to you, a servant is not greater than his master, nor is a messenger greater than the one who sent him. I'm afraid what they're going to see is a whole bunch of people that just simply think they're better than one another. Rather than a group of people who claim to believe in the Jesus of the Bible, who wrap the towel around their waist and lovingly serve and encourage one another. If you want to share Jesus with people, I think that he gets us groups giving you a pretty good opportunity. Say, hey, did you did you see that commercial? Did, did you what do you think about that commercial? About people taking time to wash the feet of someone that they obviously are not on the same page with in life. And then to just walk from there to, and you know the Jesus they're talking about. Can I can I talk about him with you? Can I share what he says? Can I share what he did? Can I share the change he's made in my life, the difference that he's made in my life? Can I share with you some of the scriptures that they're referring to? Because I think, I think we have forgotten that all the people that are presently living in a way that the Bible condemns are the very people that Jesus of the Bible has come to save. And that without Christ, their story will never change. And if they don't find us living and relating to one another and relating towards them the way Jesus did and does, then we will not be a part of God's work in their lives. I don't believe that God affirms sin. I, I don't believe that there is in any way the ability to have integrity in Scripture, to be faithful or sound in Scripture, and to tell people that sin is acceptable in any form. I don't think there are ways to jump from old culture to new culture to uh, somehow to reinterpret the Bible related to gender or marriage and sexuality. I don't think you can do any of that. I think the Bible is very, very clear. But I also find that what's in Scripture is a portrait and a picture of a future church in the book of Revelation that is people from all those places of condemnation, that is filled with people from all those different colors and tribes and tongues, and that mixed in that are people who came from homosexuality, people who came out of transgenderism, people who were saved out of alcoholism, who were saved after abortions or from having abortions, people who were saved from their place of condemnation and moved, as the Bible says, from darkness to light, from death to life. My fear isn't that the He Gets This campaign is going to water down the gospel. My fear is that a whole bunch of people who say they believe the gospel are going to demonstrate something other than the gospel rather than saying, you know what? Absolutely. Absolutely, Jesus loves you. And absolutely, I'll wash your feet. 
And while I wash your feet, I want to tell you about Jesus who loved me, saved me, and is coming again for me. See, I, I don't know that the issue is, is one group going to water it down and one group going to get it right. I think we've just got a point in our culture and a point in our country where those who truly understand the gospel are going to either be used by the Lord to share that gospel and be a part of God's work in other people's lives, or they're just going to be echo chamber gatherings where we sit and talk about how we've got it all right. I mean, because I, I do. I think, I, I think what I believe is right, unashamedly. But I want what I know to be true to change the life of someone who doesn't think it's true. So I found myself in, in reading through, again, reminded of an article written uh, back a year ago about the same group where Joe Carter's, and I don't, I don't always agree with Joe Carter. Please just know, I hate that we have to always preface everything that way. But he said this, before we hastily dismiss their efforts, we should remember what Jesus told his disciples when they tried to stop someone from driving out demons in his name because the person wasn't one of them. Do not stop him, Jesus said. For no one who does a mighty work in my name will be able soon afterward to speak evil of me. For the one who is not against us is for us in Mark chapter 9. I would submit this to the criticizers. You may be right about what a group could have done. You may be more creative you may have a better plan. But I do think we should be careful that in our response to a group that has claimed to believe in the Jesus of the Bible, that has claimed to be a part of the Lausanne movement, which is a faithful uh, explanation of rights and wrongs and beliefs, um, who consistently on their website uh, say that they have uh, they're all participating in their various churches, but the Laozan Covenant is reflective of their spirit and their partnership, um, and that they want the Bible, the Jesus of the Bible, to be the one that people meet and know, and for him to be front and center in people's lives and in their churches. I think we just got to be really careful that we don't do the opposite of foot washing. Because everybody that's run around saying, Jesus told disciples to wash each other's feet. You have to take a step back and say, am I washing my professing brothers and sisters in Christ? Am I washing their feet? Or am I jockeying for position? I have plenty of things I could criticize about the He Gets Us movement. I, would, I, I teach and preach weekly with way more detail. Way, and I have way longer to do it. But I just can't quit thinking about D.L. Moody when criticized about his evangelism and ministry. I like my way of doing it better than your way of not doing it. So what I'm taking away from the He Gets Us movement, what am I not doing that I need to be doing? What is the church I pastor not doing that we need to be doing. I'm just going to pray for them and pray that when people open their Bibles and read of Jesus, that he changes their lives.